Welcome to Adapt in Class. Let's talk about GI Farm Lecture. This was as part of a series I did a couple of weeks ago. And I think uh, uh, you should listen to this. Um, these are high yield facts. These things will usually come in your exams no matter what. Um, they are questions they like on the GI portion of it. And it's mostly pharmacology aspect of it. So and stick around, listen. And um, I hope you get something out of the 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 gastric secreting cell. We call it gastrin. So this secrete acid into the stomachs. That's why acid is in the stomach, where it has receptors on its surface. Okay. And you can bind to these receptors and prevent the acid production. You have the uh, uh, proton pump, the H plus pumps, and the H two pumps. A, uh, receptors. The proton pumps are the PPI, proton pump inhibitor, and H2 are the anti-histamine, like the cementidine and these things. So you got to know a little bit about them um, and uh, their names so that when they give it to you, you know what you're talking about. So the PPIs are the um, omeprazole, those with the ZORs, okay? Those are the uh, PPI medication. H2 blockers, I call them the, the tidins, okay? They are the tidins, like uh, uh, example is semetidins or formitidins. When you see them, that's what um, they're talking about, H2 blockers, okay? For the gastric to prevent acid secretion. Remember when you give these people this medication, the acid level in the stomach will be lower. That means their pH goes up. They always trick you. If you give somebody with PPI, the, 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 if you take the gastric and you test the pH, it will be higher because you're decreasing acid secretion. That's a key testable fact, okay? So the formatidines and, uh, and PPI. Then we have the anti-acid, okay? They, 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 all they do is coat the surface or neutralize. They neutralize the acid. So these are the ones you talk about, the terms, the melox, the aluminum oxide, um, antacids. Okay, those are the aluminum oxide antacids. Those are why they don't decrease acid secretion by making you feel better because they neutralize. They are bases. They neutralize the acid and then they they form water and that make it make you feel comfortable. There is one. Um, more, you see, I'm doing pharmacology. I mean, sometimes I digress, but I think he come in place. Yeah. There's one more medication um, that is very special that you have to know about it, and it's called sucrophate. It's called sucrophate. It's also used for uh, peptic ulcer disease. And it's special, okay? It doesn't decrease acid secretion, so it does not affect acid secretion, but it's very important. It coats the stomach. So it, it's like a barrier, nothing go. If you go, you take it, it's going to cause, cause barrier. Nothing go inside, it uh, can be absorbed anymore. So the stomach is basically become inert. It can do anything. Because of that, it's very, very important that you teach the patient certain things. You got to teach them certain things um you got to teach them uh certain things so let me see if i can erase this this side you have to teach them certain things so one this is for sacrifice okay um because it coats the surface this medication is taking the long so you're taking it in the morning either in the morning or at night bed okay you don't take anything you take it in the morning at night um, if you take it in the morning, one hour before before you eat, okay, so they can coat the surface and then it, it doesn't cause the problem. You take it in empty stomach, okay, very, very important. Empty stomach with glass of water, full glass of water. Because it's going to affect other medication from getting absorbed, you should not take it with any other medication, especially certain medication that can, it can affect its function, um, like a warfarin. So coumadin 
It can affect its function, which is usually absorbed in the stomach, and digoxin, this important medication, or dilantin. Um, they shouldn't take it together with sucrophate, okay? Then what do you tell them then? They should wait, okay? Wait one to two hours before taking this medication, one to two hours before taking them. Otherwise, they won't be absorbed and they are dangerous medication, it become a problem. So take them, so when you're taking any medication, you have to wait one to two hours after you've taken a sucrophate before you can take those medications. The common side effect is constipation. So if they, um, they give you sucrophate and they give you some, um, some side effects and they say constipation, don't worry about it. You don't need to worry about it at all. Constipation is expected because it slow things down, it prevent absorption. The most important thing they're going to ask you about sucrophate is the teaching intervention and it's a SATA question, okay? Or prioritization question. Tell the patient to take it with the empty stomach, a glass of water, if you, you cannot take it with your medication, if you have to take it, wait one to two hours so that you can intervene. You have to intervene. Um, one thing I wanted to say is antacid is bad. There's a reason why I say that. For your test, see them as bad. You cannot take any medication with antacid because they neutralize the acid uh, um, content of the stomach and they can affect absorption of most medication. So they always, in, in your test, when you see antacid, don't, don't pick it in, okay? When they said about teaching, examine, um, teaching a patient intervention is always going to be antacid. They trick you. You cannot take it with any medication. You have to wait for two hours, and then um, you, you, you make sure you don't take it together Otherwise, the medication function is not going to be effective and it won't be absorbed. It affects calcium absorption, it affects so many things. So you gotta know antacid is bad for your test. So don't, don't be antacid friends, okay? Since we are on um, this, let, let me bring in something. After they've taken all these antacids, some people will take it for a long time. Some may be taking it over the counter. Some may not be taking over the counter. It's a prescription. There's a long-term side effect. I just want to include this. I think it's very important. Long-term effect, no, people don't know. They, they pop this like a candy, but it's a long-term effect. It can lead to osteoporosis, okay? And that's where you have to do, put your critical thinking hat on. Why? It, it affects calcium absorption the antacid and those, and so if we, and the PPI, long-term use of PPI, antacid, all those medication uh, that affect acid uh, in your stomach, osteoporosis, decreased calcium absorption. And so you have to do your teaching, say they should go exercise, okay, uh, dancing exercise, okay, and you have to give them the uh, bisphosphonate, okay, the dronates, that's their last name, so that it can beat, um, uh, they can build up their bone. So it's a base phosphonate, okay? So that's why we use the alandronate and all those things, they need them. So anybody on long-term uh, antacids, you got to walk, worry about osteoporosis. And the most dangerous one is change in the, um, change, change in the flora, okay? Change in, the GI flora. That means you're changing the bacteria level. There's a certain level of bacteria to be in the system. If you change it, your body won't like it. This is why when you take antibiotic, you get diarrhea because you destroy all the bacteria inside your gut. And then you cannot protect yourself. And then what happens? You have diarrhea. The same thing. If you take this PPI, they change the, the flora in the gut and the when you take the flora in the gut, there's some bacteria there that become more dangerous. C. diff, we all have C. diff, but it's not dangerous. Crostidium deficit is in the, inside your gut, but it doesn't cause problem. It help you also. But if you destroy the other good bacteria that is fighting against it, then Crostidium will flourish. 
and it gives you diarrhea. That's how people get sedif. And you know, this contact precaution, they can get sick. So these two uh, priority function that you have to know uh, about side effect, long-term side effect of anti, uh, anti-acid. So osteoporosis and C. diff. Don't forget that. Don't forget that at all. Sometimes they throw in pneumonia. I mean, and so that's why people in ICU will give them an, um, this anti-acid. But it's all related to the change in you know, flora. They're more likely to get pneumonia and when they aspirate and other things. So, um, but that's not too that important. I think these two, uh, osteoporosis and long-term um, C. diff is something you want to avoid as much as possible. These are priority issues that you should be worried about, okay? You know, we talk about the PPI, talk about the PPI already. We talk about the H2 blockers. We talk about superfate. We talk about um, treatment of H. pyloric. We've done all, uh, and talk about the antiacid. And there's some few that is associated with this. I just need to add that to it. Um, it just came. Um, remember, I told you about PPI, long-term sedative. Well, how do you treat this? How do you treat sedative? Because they may ask you, somebody have a sedative, what do you do? Well, flagell, so metronidazole and vancomycin. This, this is oral vancomycin or enema. Okay. So they can have it without enema. The, the, the main thing I wanted to talk about is the flagell metronidazole, okay? This is very important because it's the easy um, antibiotic that we use it for multiple things. So you need to teach the patient. Number one thing you have to know is it has metallic taste. It tastes bad. It's a big medication. Patient become nausea, nauseated, and sometimes they vomit. So they hate the medication. So you got to encourage them to take it, okay? Um, it can give you, it's also a sulfur drug. So by now you should know things about when you hear sulfur drug, yeah, you talk, think of a photosensitivity. So you teach them where long sleeves, where at, sun lotion, don't go out when it's hot. But the worst one is Stephen John syndrome, where they develop small popular mass on your skin. That is a priority patient you should see. It's an emergency. Stephen John syndrome is because of the sulfur drug is metronidazole. Um, their urine can change, they become dark. So when they call you that they vomiting, the urine is dark, tell them, oh, it's okay, it'll get better, enjoy. So that's some of the things that I'm, I'm sorry, you can't you can say enjoy, but that's the thing. You encourage them, you you just put them in the nice form and say, hey, you can, uh, it's normal. That is a, 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 a expected finding. It will get better as, as, after you finish the antibiotic. The one that I want to talk about that occurred to me is this. You cannot take alcohol with it. You have like bad disulfiram reaction. So, Flagyl and alcohol are enemies, and they shouldn't be have alcohol on board four days before they take it and four days after. So they shouldn't be take, drinking four days before before you start the antibiotic, and then after they finish the antibiotic today, they have to wait extra four days before the whole thing can get out of their system. And so these are testable um, things you should know. When it comes to my head, I try to put it down. The other thing too that I remember is these medications. Okay, so there's a few medications that um, they try to trick you with. Extended release medication, okay? Extended release and sustained release medication. All it means is these usually come in the capsule. Okay, one of them. Um, the reason why extended release is because we want to give you a large amount of uh, uh, Medication, but we don't want to give it to you right away. So we give you a small portion within six hours range. If you chew it, if you crush it, you get all the milligrams that you needed and you get sick. So no crush or chew. 
and they will never go into NG2. The one they confuse you with is what? St uh, double strength medication or single strength. That's what it means is, is the strength of the medication. It doesn't mean that it's a sustained. Single strength, double strength means is, is the strength of it, but not the sustainment. Therefore, you can crash this. And then you can um, put this in the NG tube and you can shoot this. So if they give it to you and say, oh, this is a sustained release, you have to intervene and patient is chewing it or the LPN is putting it through the NG tube. No, it's going to kill the patient. So they shouldn't do that at all. So that's like unacceptable um, thing that they should do. So no, 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 no for that. There is some a few medications that also I just want to say briefly about them. Um, they they irritate the esophagus. They, they are gastric medication. They irritate the esophagus such that they cause esophagitis. So. Um, like how you got gastritis because it's very important. They are testable questions because these are medication you got to teach the patient. Um, potassium is, is especially, or the tetra, tet, tetracycline or the cycling group, those the cycling, okay? Or the, the, the dronates, that is the um, bisphosphonate for osteoporosis. These medication irritate the esophagus, they causes um, esophagitis. And so they may ask you to teach them how to, we, I'm just looking at things that I think they're likely to ask. Um, they may ask you, how do you teach this patient? They should take this medication, empty stomach, okay? But with a full glass of water. And stay upright for between 30 minutes to 60 minutes after taking that medication and allow it to drain so that it doesn't irritate the esophagus. That's all you, I think you, you should know about this medication. Uh, potassium, tetracycline, dosocycline, and the dronate. You need to take them empty stomach um, in a full glass of water and then remain upright after taking it. And that may prevent the esophagitis, okay? So that is a key thing you need to let the patient know. So that's a brief gastric farm. So let me give you a brief idea of the liver, and then we, we do what we got to do.